Okay, so here's an example dashboard with a what if parameter already added. Let's have a look at what we've got here. Our data is very simple. I've got uh, fruit sales by country, and as you can see in the in the matrix table here, if I sum those sales, my, my total sales is 2,300, as you can see in the card. And then I've got a bar chart, um, and I've got two uh, two fields in the bar chart, two measures in the bar chart, I should say. I'm looking at sales, which is the sales represented in, in this table and this card. I'm looking at new sales, which has our parameter value applied. So a what if parameter allows our, our end users, the consumers of the dashboard, um, to make a change to a, to a variable and to see that change affect uh, the, the, the measures and the values presented within the report. Um, so let's just have a look at how that works here. Um, so if I go over to my slicer here, my parameter slicer, I can either drag uh, the, um, the slider here um, to the right hand side and you'll notice that that updates my values um, or I could input uh, a value um, directly into the box and press enter there uh, as you can see. So notice that when I do that I can see that my new sales on the right hand side um, have had that percentage difference applied to them um, to, to calculate the new total. And I can see that that's updated the values in the table. And I can also see that my new sales um, in my bar chart on, on the left-hand side here, um, you, can, you can see the impact on my new sales versus my existing sales. So a great tool for scenario testing and for allowing users to, to understand a bit more about the impact of, of different changes on the information presented in the dashboard. OK, so let's have a go at creating one of these what-if parameters from scratch. So if I flick to my walkthrough sheet here, I'm going to start just by removing some of the elements that were used in that previous page so that you can see how we create these for, you, for yourself. OK, so let's start, first of all, just by uh, creating, going to the modeling tab up here. Um, I'm going to click New Parameter at the top here and I get presented with the, 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 the options screen as you can see. So the first option is to uh, give the parameter a name. Let's just call this sales parameter. Um, I can choose my data type for my parameter. Um, so when I'm looking at percentage change there are a couple of ways of doing this. I could either um, use a decimal number um, or I could use a whole number and, and calculate that, convert that into a percentage within my measure. So for simplicity here I'm just going to go for, for a whole number. I can then uh, specify a minimum and a maximum value that the user can select. Um, given that in this instance I want to be able to um, apply negative percentages as well as positive ones, um, I'll uh, just start at minus 100 um, and let's go up to a maximum of 100 as well. I can choose the increment, so the amount that I want the user to be able to uh, increase or decrease the variable by. Um, I can input a default value there if I want to start at a particular value. Um, and I can toggle the tick box here to add a slicer automatically to the page for me. So I'll leave that ticked and I'll just click OK. And you'll see that a few things uh, happen at once here. So first of all, I've got my slicer on my page that you can see uh, that's appeared at the top. Um, but alongside that, you'll notice that I've got a new table in my fields list here called sales parameter. Let's just drop down on that table and have a look at what's been created. So first of all, I've got my parameter itself, which is uh, actually using this generate series DAX function. You can see that um, within this function, I'm specifying the minimum, the maximum and the interval um, for that particular parameter. But alongside that, I've got a new measure, uh, which is my sales parameter value measure. And that's using the selected value function um, just to return the value that is selected across that sales parameter series. Um, and we'll use that to inform our new measure um, with our new sales value. OK, so let's start by just copying across some of the visuals here that we can use for our uh, new, um, new sales measure. I'm just going to format so that it's a bit clearer the sales parameter in exactly the same way as well. OK, so the next step for us is to create our new sales measure. I'm going to create this in the fruit sales table. I'm going to go to modeling and uh, new measure at the top here. I'm going to call this measure new sales. And I'm just going to start by taking a sum of the uh, existing sales column. And I'm going to multiply that by 
um, 1 plus uh, our selected value. So if I type in sales parameter selected value um, measure, oops, that's it. And then I'm going to divide that by 100 and close my brackets there. And this will give me my percentage change. So now if I uh, select my card, first of all, I'll bring in my new measure to replace the existing measure on that card. Um, just change the uh, format of that card as well. There we go. Um, and I'll add my uh, new measure to my table as well. So I'll just go on to the um, uh, fields list here and add in new sales instead of sales into my matrix table. Um, next thing, I'll just add my new sales uh, measure into my bar chart at the top so we can see how that is affected. And then you'll see, as soon as I start to change this parameter, um, I could add on, let's say I want to increase, uh, look at the, the impact if I increase sales by 50% and drag that to 50%. I can see the impact straight away on my total sales, um, the, the, the impact by fruit and, the, and then um, for all the individual values within my matrix table. And that's the what if parameter. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please do comment on the video. Um, I'd really appreciate your feedback. Um, and as always, it would be great if you could like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful. Um, and I'll see you next time.